good morning ladies and gentlemen uh i am uh, uh, we are on the second day of this uh, uh, wonderful conference i i want to compliment the organizers aima uh, as well as uh, 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 professor rajan saxena as well as uh, dr pramod uh, pramod sena uh, for organizing this and of course also to invite me to share my views as well as uh, have a conversation uh, with some very eminent panelists <clears throat> the uh, the name of the session or the title of the session that was shared is changing employment uh, <clears throat> landscape and as i was talking to my fellow panelists uh, dr vinny jory who uh, we can see right now uh she wears multiple hats uh and i'm sure she'll wear all of them in this conversation that we have today and uh, dr vinny jory is an educationist uh uh but now very heavily involved in the technology and services industry uh she is the director education advocacy at uh, microsoft corporation india limited uh, private limited and uh, has uh, is also uh, leading the learning and skills <coughs> activity of microsoft corporation she manages strategic engagements and evangelism programs in education so comes with a very vast and diverse and in depth experience uh, i uh, uh, decided to put some labels on people uh, on my fellow panelists so i i labeled her as somebody who will represent technology services and now i i should say uh, education uh, uh she is uh, uh a, but very much like we have lifelong learners which i'm sure all of us are or will have to become uh she is a lifelong teacher uh, she has changed so many lives and uh, it's just uh, uh so impressive to listen to her so vinny thank you very much for joining uh i am waiting for the second panelist uh, and i'll introduce her as she comes in uh but let me get along with the topic of the session the topic of the session like we were discussing yesterday uh is vast enough for us to not only spend <clears throat> the the one hour that we have but actually spend uh, the rest of the day and i'm sure a lot of what we are going to discuss has already been discussed and we will try to bring out some uh, very specific uh, areas that uh, we believe will definitely add value uh, to the, to the audience so just to set the context uh, what i wanted to say was as follows uh, we've been we've been working with this term oh very nice we have uh, our second panelist with us and i might as well finish introducing her as well uh, so i have great uh, pleasure in introducing uh, uh, mrs uh, vinita uh, bajoria uh, she is an industrialist and uh, is involved with a number of uh, what she calls uh, traditional industries and that by the way is a changing employment landscape which we will be discussing because that is also a very important part of present and uh, vinita before you came i said we will <clears throat> we will we will try to put labels on on our panelists so that we know what do they specialize in so uh, vinita uh, represents uh, 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 industry or uh, manufacturing industry more more specifically but then with the diversity and diverse experience that she has of having been associated with with multiple organizations uh, uh and the amount that he, she has been studying and continues to study uh i called uh, uh vinny uh, vinita just before you came i called her a lifelong teacher so i'm going to call you a lifelong learner with your permission and i must say that you are a lifelong learner as well as teacher and uh, so is vinny uh, and we all are but <clears throat> i just thought we will we will talk about uh, these aspects of what does it mean in the current uh, changing employment landscape 
So I was saying that uh, the present times have indeed been very volatile and and the term VUCA, which we have been using for the last 10 years, has now, I think, uh, perhaps become a part of uh, Oxford Dictionary. If not, it should become, because I think every now and then the most commonly word, commonly used word that one comes across is unprecedented. Everything that is happening is unprecedented. It has not happened before. We haven't had a pandemic which uh, has covered the whole humanity in one shot. We have not, not had an adversity of this kind which affects the whole uh, humanity simultaneously. So unprecedented. Uh, the amount of technology and, and the way technology has been put to use is unprecedented as a response to this pandemic. And I must say one benefit of the, of the, of the technology advancements which uh, were knocking on the doorstep of uh, of industry for a long period of time, and the world was divided between naysayers and fence sitters and and uh, some eager beavers. Uh, I think everybody is now fully aligned and understands the role which digital technologies specifically uh, are going to be playing. And therefore, the future of work, which we used to say is five years away and ten years away, I think is now beginning to come closer closer on the horizon and much, much more visible. <clears throat> the, the, uh, the acceptance of, of this phenomenon uh, itself, I think, is causing uh, an acceleration. The, the other outcome which has happened is that in this employment uh, changing scenario landscape, which I would say, uh, we not only have the impact of technology, the impact of work, but also an impact on the workplace. And that has a very, very specific significance on, on, uh, on the <clears throat> future or on the employment landscape. Uh, as if this was not enough at an environment point of view, uh, just to define the complexity of the situation that we are in. Uh, number one, the employee, the, the, the quintessential employee that we were used to, uh, is not the same. Uh, we now have, uh, at this point of time, the employees that work, work uh, that are coming into the organization are not coming in thinking that they are going to get a lifelong in employment. Not, neither will they get, nor do they want. Not only that, in fact, there are others on the uh, other extreme which are talking about gig workers. They say we not only don't want the... Uh, a, a lifelong work, I actually would be happy to work a few hours a day. And uh, maybe I would like to work with two or three organizations. So gig workers and uh, is, is, is a new phenomenon. Uh, we have a multi-generational workforce now in front of us, right? We, we have the, the baby boomers who are still struggling with technology. Uh, we have the millennials who had reasonable comfort with technology. And uh, now we have the Gen Z who, when their umbilical cord is cut, uh, comes out uh, a Wi-Fi router. They are so connected with the world that, uh, uh, that technology comes very, very naturally to them. And uh, they come with very specific traits. We've discussed generation gaps for long periods of time, and it has always existed. But I think the way it is manifesting itself now I think is something which, the, which has an impact on the employment landscape. We have two additional problems which have just, uh, op additional opportunities which have just come up. The whole opportunity of the great resignation, where uh, people who, who went back to their uh, home place or wherever else, uh, now do not want to come back to the workplace. In the West, many were furloughed, and now they don't want to come back to the same job. Uh, new problem. Uh, and then there is, in a closer home, we have a war for talent, uh, where just about uh, the, the attrition rates have gone up. People are not able to find good enough people. So the, there is a big churn in the employee place. Uh, the employer uh, environment landscape has changed also. Uh, we earlier were 
large employment was uh, was with manufacturing industries and then the services industry came up and in the recent times the innovation industry the startups have come up and i think they are also uh, uh, new employers and this is a new employment landscape on one hand obviously uh, it is having a large effect <coughs> on the kind of um, uh, employees these employers will be looking for and i'm sure we will uh, since both of you are employers i'm sure we will be talking about that as well the work itself has changed quite a bit uh, and there is a big huge change taking place uh, individual worker or an individual excellent uh, is is no longer the only thing which is required to succeed teamwork has a very very important uh, role to play uh, the outcome that people used to be measured for uh, earlier was whether you showed up in the office and spent your full time and 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 did something uh, then result then led to results now the, the the metrics for measurement of your success uh, are moving to how innovative you have been how many new ideas you've been able to come up and how agile have you been to learn new skills and get get cracking uh, diversity and inclus inclusivity are very very important diversity at workplace has suddenly <clears throat> taken a new role because in the new environment that we are in uh, uh, we are also realizing that getting uh, uh, getting every gender and equal opportunity to work at workplace uh, is very very significant and i'm sure we will talk about that uh, on the other hand uh, we also have uh, the whole issue of saying what should the worker come with because the 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 work itself with automation and new roles is defining newer competencies uh, there is a term which is emerging which started in the full uh, which started in the technology services industry which was of a full stack developer i think i would like to remove the word developer and say now every professional has to be a full stack professional a full stack professional is one who is multifunctionary which have who has holistic competencies to work across disciplines is able to learn very fast right is able to do all parts of the job uh, the manufacturing industry started with the assembly line principle but the assembly line principle in the innovation industry is not working out so the whole need for a full stack professional a uh, technology industry saw this need and have acted and uh, uh, organizations are are preparing themselves for it uh, we are an active member of we as my company and my our university is an active member of this movement but what we are realizing is that in every function we need full stack professionals and last but not the least as if everything else was okay and everything else used to be stable at least everybody used to go to a place called my workplace my office my factory my this the concept of workplace itself has been put into a question mark so the workplace itself is now no longer work from office it moved to work from home but i think it's now moving on to work from anywhere so if you want to work from anywhere and your employees who have not seen each other and we are all experiencing those people who have never seen each other and our colleagues for last two years and have to deliver results and have to come up with innovative outcomes which require teamwork i think is a sufficient amount of complexity uh, that we can discuss i'm sure we will not discuss all the elements but i just wanted to lay the canvas open for all of us and decide which corner of the canvas do we want to paint on uh, what i would do is uh, i will uh, uh, make it simple for uh, uh, the two panelists i have uh, and i am going to ask them first to define how do they see this in the ambience and the label that unfortunately i uh, you got attached with uh, willingly or not so willingly but if you can but you can you can uh, talk about anything else that you would be like 
And I also know that you come with very diverse and deep interests. I'm very familiar with uh, uh, Vinita's very uh, special involvement in spirituality. So I want to see what role does that have to play. But maybe we cross that bridge in the, in the in the uh, in the second part of our discussion. And I also know Vinny's uh, passion for uh, social and emotional resilience. And uh, we'll talk about that also. So those are softer issues and maybe have great answers to some of this uh, changing employment landscape. So without further ado, may I start with Vinita and Vinita, uh, let's go back to the traditional industry that you claim you're coming from. You are a, you are a, you are a modern thinker in the traditional industry. How are you, what are you experiencing? And then we'll come up with how are you coping with it? Over to you, Vinita. You are on mute. That's the most commonly used term of 2020. You're still on mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all of you for having me here, the organizers. And um, uh, thank you, Mr. Tadani. I, th I think that was a fabulous introduction. And uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, first, uh, to begin with, I would first like to uh, set the context that, yes, as we all know, that we are in the midst of a profound economic and social transformation. And this has actually been catalyzed by the rapid advances in automation, artificial intelligence, and unlimited access to data and computation. And the impact of these technologies actually pervades uh, nearly every sector of our economy. And it is actually affecting a wide range of occupations across all healthcare, finance, transportation, energy, and last but not the least, manufacturing, which is where I come from. So, you know, uh, uh, before, uh, you know, touching upon how it is uh, uh, impacting industry, I would like to make a few interesting observations, um, if I may, that as with the previous industrial revolutions, uh, these advances actually have the potential uh, to bring about extraordinary benefits to the society. Like we oftentimes talk about technological disruption in a very bad, you know, very negative manner. And we say that, you know, uh, jobs will go away, jobs will disappear, machines will take over. But actually, these uh, uh, advances actually have the potential to bring about extraordinary benefits to the society, and it can contribute to enormous prosperity in the long run. So, but uh, having said that, these innovations will actually transform the future of work, which is not necessarily, you know, a bad thing. Uh, it will uh, definitely, uh, it will, you know, exacerbate the skill bias. But then, then that again is really good because it will, you know, give people uh, uh, the motivation to upskill and reskill. And it will also widen the chasm between the least and the most educated in the society. Now, while, while some jobs will be highly automated, others will change significantly because of technology. New markets, industries and jobs will definitely be created. Now, uh, Again, you know, like who could have ever imagined that a tiny gadget like a cell phone could actually obliterate or replace 50 technologies and, uh, you know, uh, gadgets that we have virtually grown up with. So that is the kind of change. And uh, of course, you know, energy, renewable energy is making tremendous progress. And now we are getting solar and other, you know, energy sources at a fraction of their earlier cost. Again, uh, you know, the advent of electrical vehicle is, of course, you know, uh, completely new in the field of energy generation and utilization. Now, 3D manufacturing has actually, you know, uh, now uh, again, here I would like to, you know, just uh, put in my observations. So, you know, like we have actually, we started with cottage industry where uh, we could, you know, just service, uh, we could make, you know, uh, customized uh, products at very, you know, uh, limit in very limited numbers. From there on, we moved on to assembly line standardization. 
and you know henry ford's famous dialogue you can have any car as long as it's black but now with the help of technology we've actually come around a full circle whereby with the help of a 3d printer which is actually like a cottage industry because you don't need those sheds and those fancy you know uh, material handling equipments and just in time you just have that printer and sitting from your garage you can print out a completely customized product and at such a fast pace that you can actually service customers all around the world and with only technology has helped increase the market size and increase the productivity but it has brought us back to the full circle so that is the kind of change which is actually good and it whatever it takes away in terms of jobs it actually gives back in terms of you know higher productivity and increased output and increased turnovers for industry so you know the this actually becomes a competitive edge and you actually have the uh, capability of you know uh, uh, you know uh, increasing uh, your turnover exponentially by using these technologies now uh, the days of autonomous cars it's no longer a phenomenon but a reality so uh, the uh, again a generation ago now who could have imagined that a career playing video games could have even existed but today a 1 billion dollar a year e-sport industry is there so similarly uh, you know these new careers which are being thrown up uh, is actually proving to it's it's actually showing that people like coming back to what you know mr tharani was referring to spirituality like you know uh, earlier before the steam engine the uh, whole debate was around when the horse carriages were being replaced you know by cars the whole debate was around that what would the horses do they would be unemployed but actually horses were not meant to draw, draw carriages they were meant to you know uh, uh, do you know better things like you know horse racing etc so it freed them for that similarly we human beings are actually not me- meant to do mental heavy lifting that we have been doing also physical heavy lifting so technology both you know in terms of you know which are placing mental skills like you know more computation and you know uh, uh, artificial intelligence and uh, deep learning and again automation like robotics it's free human beings from mental and physical heavy lifting and actually freeing up time for them to do better things whereas the job component maybe in terms of hours might be reduced but actually the output will go up exponentially their earnings will go up they will get an incentive to reskill upskill and the free time can be used to actually you know uh, hone the human skills which are so much in demand today critical thinking emotional quotient empathy you know out of box thinking by resorting to you know uh, more uh, uh, you know uh, spirituality and study further studies and philosophy and you know recreation which will actually improve their overall quality of life because covid has actually move the focus of the work, uh, of the workforce and they are con- seriously consider reconsidering the role of work in their lives you know uh, nowadays even advanced economies don't have enough jobs to keep their workforce engaged for a full week just recently you must have read that belgium has uh, given its citizens the option to go for a four day work week so this is how i look at you know i mean uh, Uh, the technological you know uh, advancement the huge technological advancement that look, we are looking at this is exactly how i look at it you know panning out and of course i would love to speak more about it and touch upon the metaverse which is the next big thing so uh, sh- uh, uh, do i uh, can i touch upon it now mr tadani or should i wait till the till vini Uh, uh no we would definitely want to hear and i'll make a a note of that 
but yes. i i just wanted to see how are how is this changing employment landscape um uh, helping or hurting or causing uh, a change in your workplace that is the manufacturing industry do you want to touch upon that yes definitely so you know how it is changing uh, you know uh, honestly speaking we are have facing a huge talent scarcity so this talent scarcity is actually a blessing in disguise why because it gives us as employers a lot more incentive to invest in upskilling reskilling our employees it also gives the employees it makes it actually it you know uh, they will become redundant if they don't upskill and reskill so they are left with no option so this actually improves the quality of workers that we are getting i mean earlier definitely the numbers may reduce but then again those numbers when they get reskilled and when our you know because of this in, uh, better quality output and more output the sheer turnovers increase then those same workforce we could take them in their new reskilled avatars which would actually augur very well and would be a win win for both industry and the workers so we are actually shifting the paradigm instead and if we were to just look at the you know uh, absolute figures yes you know it's alarming industry is facing shortage workers are not getting jo- jobs you know but if we look at it relative to the skill sets needed and the skill sets which are actually very essential to move the productivity frontier then i would say it is a huge blessing because that's again you know the quality enhancement is there and you know, so many other intangible benefits and ta- of course it all translates into tangible benefits and the bottom line of course increases yeah and i and i can see that i think one interesting point which you are making is that when the new talent comes into the organization and they are coming with different skills they become catalysts for helping the others to realize ki look i can be like this if i can reskill myself so that hunger for reskilling will come definitely so, they set a great example yeah and, yeah yeah and yeah. even organizations are setting examples we as organizations honestly have not especially in our traditional industries we have not invested enough in our workforce so we need to do that because it's actually not an expense it is an investment which actually pays back many more times the payback if you see is actually so fast and uh, it has so many other you know uh, benefits that it's actually worthwhile to invest in not only reskilling but also in upgrading our technology upgrading the machines which makes way for a much better you know working environment the hygiene the total hygiene of the industry very, the traditional very, industry it changes very correct very very interesting but uh, just tag this metaverse and you just use the word spirituality but you stop there so those are two things which we'll come back to sure. uh, 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 let me stick to a uh, switch to vinny so vinny in your world uh what do you see as the changing employment landscape what are the moving moving forces what are the moving parts sure first of all uh, thank you vijay for a very warm introduction and good afternoon to all of you and thank you for inviting me here to share my thoughts so the nature of change is very very rapid if we look at uh, the services segment uh, there are huge technology shifts uh, that are happening we are at the cusp of the fourth industrial revolution Uh, which is powered by technologies like artificial intelligence uh, big data cloud technologies iot and as per the future of jobs survey from the world economic forum 2020 uh, it shares the data that 80 to 90% of the businesses will embrace cloud artificial intelligence uh, data iot uh, in their operations security aspects will become very very important and if you look at multiple service segments uh, right from education to uh, financial industry to retailing uh, healthcare segment logistics 
hospitality and tourism uh, there are profound changes which are powered by technology and has impact on the employment as well uh, so there is a huge demand for talent uh, which is exposed to areas like cloud uh, artificial intelligence big data and they range not only from technology developers but to business development uh, and you know uh, artificial intelligent experts data scientists data analytics and across segments we are seeing a huge amount of startups uh, happening as well i'll share some examples to bring in more clarity uh, on the thoughts that i have expressed uh, for example if we look at education uh, there have been massive investments uh, that have happened here if you look at startups that are emanating from india india stands at number 3 in the world in terms of absolute number of startups that are happening in education segment uh, you know the digital footprint is uh, vastly increasing you talked about uh, the nature of workplace evolving so hybrid uh, forms of learning online edtech companies uh, have seen massive investments in very short periods of time uh, for example uh, byju uh, is one of the largest edtech players in the world is hiring big time has hired 5000 people hiring 8000 more numbers an academy for instance um, has increased its uh, workforce uh, within a couple, within a year from 600 to 4000 you look at the nature of investments in companies like upgrad its annual uh, uh, you know uh, worth is uh, 3.3 billion dollars um, uh, eruditus which is 3.2 billion dollars which offers upskilling courses from multiple global universities uh, through the online channels class plus uh, 65 million dollars were invested in the organization uh, last year so there are more investments bigger markets more jobs and with talent that has a high degree of uh, technology intensity uh, in their work component i'd also come down to finance as well uh, fintech is world's uh, fastest growing industry with uh, 67% of uh, 2100 fintech entities in operation uh, in india it's valued at about 50 to 60 billion dollars and by the year 2025 will grow to about 150 billion dollars so you can imagine the amount of jobs that will get thrown open you talk about healthcare sector narayana hospitals for example have transformed their patient care um, they for example for one of their specializations which is around um, monitoring the condition of heart you have wonderful 3d outputs where an individual can monitor over periods of time how the condition of heart is evolving that could have been unthinkable of because earlier there were textual reports or a report that uh, a common man could not understand but if you have visual insights into how the muscle of the heart uh, are uh, are evolving i think it's it's you know the nature of jobs the kind of outputs the services that are rendered to consumers are at a very different level uh, likewise uh, you know in it its mckinsey and company have forecasted that software as a service companies have the potential to create 1 trillion dollars in value and half a million new jobs by the year 2030 so technology is opening multiple frontiers of unprecedented opportunities for employment and upskilling uh, we've read in the public reports tcs is hiring almost 1.2 lakh people uh, this year and investing in exposure to cloud to almost 50000 uh, engineers with certifications industry certifications on board as well uh, fresh works which started as a saas player in 20 Ten is hiring from thirteen global uh, locations and has over forty one hundred employees. So you look at the scale, uh, the kind of wonderful new innovations that are happening in agriculture. Misho, which is a social um, e-commerce company, is uh, onboarded fifteen million entrepreneurs, especially women across India, to become financially independent. so they have brought them closer to the marketplace 
So it's an unprecedented revolution. Uh, it has led to market forces coming together by way of policy, by way of financial opportunities, and bringing in aspirations of a young population, uh, which has great ideas and actually can put them to practice. So in terms of talent, uh, I think, as you rightly said, millennials look out for flexibility. They look out for better assignments and they look at using their talent uh, in meaningful ways. So great times. Uh, and this also brings us um, in terms of change, uh, we need to look at competencies that are required to be successful, which are a combination of not only technical skills, but social emotional skills. Uh, life is going to be uh, more complex. So having a monk mindset, having a long term approach to life, having social emotional resilience so that you can bring simplicity to very complex situations high degree of integrity, growth mindset, which is beyond seeing the conventional ways of doing things, able ability to work in diverse environments and work with global workforce are all aspects that employers are looking at. We are also looking at new kind of leadership, uh, which is more like facilitating and creating opportunities for manifestation of potential of people. And for education institutions, this has huge responsibility to anchor the shift in teaching and learning practices. So faculty, school, uh, or institutional leaders will have to transform themselves to embrace new generation curriculum, invest in mentorship of students, and also um, embrace industry level certifications as well, so that the talent that emanates out of these institutions uh, is successful for a long term and have a learning mindset. And I'll just stop here. Thank you. So uh, I think we uh, we have all three of us have amplified the uh, uh, the problem that we have with our with our great inputs and uh, and experiences. Uh, right. So I think uh, we will we will leave the audience uh, in kind of halfway if we just told them what is the big problem that we have. Right. I, I think we should now switch discussion with your permission uh, to both of you. Let's switch discussion to what have we done about it. So maybe we can talk about a little bit of our experiences. So I thought if we can, uh, we can just pick up two threads, uh, which may be very useful. Uh, we have a bunch of, uh, uh, we, we divide the world in two parts. One part is which is already working in the industry, right? What do we do? Very, very clearly, they need a transformation. Uh, the workplace is transforming, work is transforming, people are transforming, employees are transforming, plus global disruption. So let's talk about a couple of examples that we have in our respective organizations where uh, we have done something to look at the existing workforce, the existing workforce we have, and what are we doing uh, to transform them, not only through technical skills, not only through technical skills, functional skills they have because they already are there, but also behavioral skills. Because we are now realizing that behavioral skills, which we used to take for granted of camaraderie of belonging to the same organization and having the same organization culture, which used to happen by, by being in the same, under the same roof and standing at the same coffee machine is not there. So two elements of how we are handling, how are we upgrading our technology skills? How are we bringing in critical thinking and other skills? and problem solving skills and how are we doing uh, handling behavioral skills. So we could talk about that uh, as one part. Then we'll talk about what is happening on the other side, which is those who are, who are wanting to come into the organizations, what should we do? But let's start with that. So Vinita, uh, over to you or we can switch order this time. As you wish. Oh, let's go with you now that you open that you responded. <laughs> Great. Uh, so uh, uh, just to uh, uh, get the question right, first, you want to know that exactly what is the skill gap which exists right now? 
no i'm i'm trying to say we figured out that there is a skill gap yes and there are it's in three areas one is technological skills second is even the kind of work they used to do which is uh, more a problem solving and critical thinking involvement and the third is more behavioral skills which we used to take for granted because now they may be working from anywhere so they would not have the benefit what are organizations that uh, you come across and are associated with uh, what are they doing to handle these so uh, uh, now mr tadani if i may i would like to you know give a general answer to this question because honestly to set the context right now the kind of change that we are going through is totally unprecedented so Very we perfect. cannot draw on any past experience nobody has any past knowledge of how to do deal with the kind of transformation because honestly as it is technology was moving it you know was moving in leaps and bounds and covid has accelerated the pace to such an extent that one can just put numbers to it you know cite world economic forum report and uh, you know uh, uh, shared uh, uh, prosperity report for upskilling but honestly speaking the kind of uh, transformation which is taking place even with the, within our industries and outside of our industry is something which people have not seen and not only you know uh, the change vertically but also horizontally like across you know we are not only moving from you know uh, we are we are seeing total paradigm shifts happening which is actually urging us to prepare the people not by skilling them in any particular area but by changing behaviors and mindsets and attitudes because once these change then whatever say it's from you know uh, from super computing to quantum computing from uh, you know subtractive manufacturing to additive manufacturing from uh, physical world to metaverse from uh, uh, currencies to cryptocurrency from uh, you know the uh, single ledger to distributed ledger or blockchain that is only a matter of taking a course and learning it and that today as we know it it might drastically change tomorrow so if we say that yes today i have learned what blockchain is and i am set that is not true i have to have the attitude and the mental uh, you know the mindset to keep on learning as i go along because that is the rate at which the change is taking place so what we need to invest in is actually you know honing the adaptability portion which covid has shown us and honestly again touching back upon our scriptures you know in arthashastra which was written by chanakya uh, who was the master king maker and the chief strategist and economist he actually spoke about it so there he also says one thing that chintan not chinta needed for those who can't understand hindi you know chintan is you need to deliberate chinta is worrying so if that mindset can be inculcated in people that do not worry think plan there are courses available which companies like ours can offer to employees like i had said earlier which is such a great investment and a win win so you know by doing that we make them job ready but first we have to make them ready to get into the mindset you know because being a lifelong student is not easy and especially for workers you know they often have this mindset oh hum to sab jante hain you know i know everything so that no it all attitude to change that you actually need to work a lot on the human skills and that can actually happen with the help of philosophy with the help of scriptural studies with the help of spirituality because now people are realizing that the universe outside us is changing as it is we need to change the universe inside us so that can only be done by these things and um, we actually you know uh, we have to develop strategic thinking so how do you do that 
like earlier you know as uh, you know you would know that chanakya actually invented the game of chess which was not a game but it was actually done uh, you know it was done to teach that there are winners and losers so one has to be okay with that and how to move strategically so nowadays also actually by playing these games you know like the gaming industry i was talking about and uh, which has really developed you actually develop critical thinking strategic thinking so there is a you know positive to everything and now again there is a, a huge issue of leadership because leadership in this turbulent environment is actually so 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 important because you know people are actually looking for good leaders so a leader actually has to be a good judge of situations to take the right dis- uh, decision now again going back to s- uh, spirituality you, you a scripture uh, the our scriptures you know in uh, chanakya spoke about anvikshiki which is the science of thinking so there you know they say that there is such a huge difference between thinking and strategic thinking so you know you have to think philosophically and men actually don't like thinking as it take up takes up a lot of uh, energy but leaders have to ask the difficult questions and the right questions because there are no perfect answers so one has to be okay with failures so this is the general answer i'm giving but if you want me to be more specific then i will uh, you know talk about yes universe the more industry academia collaboration is needed whereby universities have to give vocational education so up we'll, we'll come to this we'll come to this that's on the other side of the fence right. but right. Uh, let, let's uh, let's talk about so i i think you brilliantly brought about this whole thing about chinta and chintan so you are obviously not doing chinta on what i what is happening on your workforce but you are doing some chintan on your workforce so are there any uh, specific uh, uh, actions or uh, initiatives which have taken place in the group of organizations that you are associated with yes we are definitely investing a lot more on training ha ah, so we that are, is one one trend yes. which i am noticing definitely that we people are people are investing much more in much training. more we are opening itis we are training we are reskilling we are offering them you know uh, incentives to take up courses study more and also on the job training so you know getting experts from outside training them and um, uh, you know uh, uh, basically you know teaching them the latest uh, technology buying what? new new machines and getting the manufacturers to come and educate then you know uh, uh, moving from plc to pac you know embracing industry 4.0 making sure that they you know learn as they go along because now you know everything has become so user friendly drop down menus and all it doesn't take much time the and the marginal investment is actually in uh, you know teaching them is actually very low and payback is very high so yes got it i have seen a lot i I, I i just want to remind all of us that uh, we have a very important responsibility we are standing between us uh, between our uh, our audience and their lunch so we'll have to just manage our time a little bit uh, uh, we have about 11 minutes we we'll leave the last 2 uh, 3 minutes for summarization but uh, uh, vinny uh, if you can quickly touch upon uh, what are the initiatives which are taking place then we will switch to what uh, should be done by academia we are discussing higher education uh, councils conference so i'm sure one takeaway will be what should be done on industry academia which i think uh, vinny uh, you alluded to but i kind of stopped you so just uh vinny you can quickly touch upon the initiatives you folks are taking yeah so there are a lot of initiatives both for the internal audience as well as the external stakeholders so first is uh, with the new shifts happening and to leverage uh, the opportunity that has been thrown open by the change uh microsoft uh, put together a huge n- number of uh, uh, courses which are available on ms learn there are more than 3200 modules 
uh, that are available to internal employees as well as external entities, universities, colleges, developers, um, partners, and uh, these are linked with job roles as well. So someone wants to become a data scientist, an artificial intelligence developer, cloud specialist, sustainable software engineering, sustainable goals, uh, those uh, modules uh, can be done. And for all the employees, it was not about just preaching to external folks, but also living it, uh, living this on a daily basis. So from rather than from know it all to learn it all was the fundamental shift that happened both within and outside. So we were all as employees went through the certification processes ourselves aligned with our job roles. So on the technology side, there was this huge amount of effort that was made. And even for customers to embrace that switch. So special uh, assistance programs were given for manufacturing, for uh, service companies, from startups. And every single employee took that, you know, the, this charter was taken to bring that knowledge and upgrade that knowledge into the ecosystem. And this is all available online and, uh, you know, very nicely done sessions on demand. There is MS Learn TV. And to upgrade the faculty as well, so there is Microsoft Learn for Educators, where they can just sign in, they will get access to teaching materials that they can have an access. They become part of global communities so that um, they learn from each other. They know how to manage those projects, how to leverage sandbox environments. And for students, there was mentorship on GitHub, which is the world's largest open source, where they could do projects on, multi on multiple industry segments. Uh, students could become student ambassadors, learn from each other. On the social emotional aspect, the culture aspect. So allyship is a core value, uh, wherein you, know, you lean on each other. So we are also, we look at, not only what we bring to the table in terms of competence, but what we can learn from others. And the lean in uh, is, is a very important, um, you know, cultural uh, aspect. And then reverse mentorship. There is no, uh, the, it's a culture of inclusion where age, gender, uh, caste, color, nothing, there are no barriers. So everybody is, feels included. Accessibility is a core charter because our world is diverse and that diversity needs to be reflected at the workplace as well. And uh, this- uh, I, I'm sorry, I, you want to complete something that you are left? I thought yeah. you were done, sorry. So, and then uh, with the external environment as well, empowering student voice through education apps like Flipgrid or gamified learning approaches yeah. through Minecraft are all areas uh, that Microsoft invested in. Wonderful. So actually, we would also handle one question from everybody. How is academia coping up with the capacity level in the light of the changing employment prospects? And uh, uh, what is your uh, experience in industry academia uh, interfaces? Uh, I will talk about mine and uh, uh, provided we are left with some time. But uh, uh, if you can make short responses, because I think we have only a few minutes left. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think there is a huge amount of change that we are witnessing with several large universities and institutes as well. Uh, we are seeing uh, they are very willing to embrace, uh, make changes in the curriculum, newer specializations like cloud AI, data sciences, security uh, are there. Universities are also investing in up skilling their faculty. Uh, they are also very open to uh, encourage students to undergo, uh, uh, you know, industry relevant courses and industry relevant certifications as well. Government of our AP is investing in uh, 300 government college students to get themselves skilled. Two lakh students are getting skilled. So this is a very good example of how that mind shift is happening in the external education landscape. Okay, uh, Vinita, your, your view? Uh, uh, yeah, of course, I mean, uh, there is a, a far uh, greater industry academia, uh, uh, you know, partnership. We are seeing a lot of people, you know, uh, uh, going back uh, 
you know, sending people to these uh, universities and institutes for uh, short term executive courses and, you know, one year executive courses, also these shorter module courses. And also, uh, uh, you know, uh, the uh, universities actually sending a lot of their faculty along with students to the industry to gain real, uh, you know, time, uh, you know, to take back the real time case studies back to the classes. In terms of, you know, like, as you would know, Harvard Business School has this field study whereby the students, you know, go to various countries, to various industries to work and, you know, uh, initiate startups and get back the experience. So getting back real uh, life experience to the classroom actually makes, uh, you know, this uh, learning so much more meaningful, you know, and makes them more industry ready, work ready. And same, uh, you know, it's a very uh, give and take relationship that is taking place. Which is yeah. actually going up. Yeah. yeah so uh, let me add. I, let me add my bit to it uh, in uh, the little time that we have. Uh, I think I for a long time we have all been saying those of us who are in, involved in the industry for a long period of time that industry, education, society, government, formal education is different from professional education. These are all disconnected islands. They are disconnected islands with an occasional ferry service which runs between these islands. The ferry service between society and the education runs when they come to drop students. The, the ferry service between uh, education and industry happens when the placement happens, right? Uh, the, the, the ferry service between government industry happens whenever you know, it's time for budget and various other things. And of course, I'm being, I'm over exaggerating. But I think in one advantage which digital technologies have brought in is we are able to actually create a larger cooperation between these five elements. And uh, one example which employers in technology sector are using one, one shift which they are, there are two very crying needs. One is what I defined as full stack professional. Full stack is my term, but uh, a more, uh, should I say, uh, a, 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 a person with the multiple competencies so that which competency is needed for what kind of a problem can be deployed. And I call the full stack professional as, as one who has the right amount of technology skills right amount of functional skills because we we shouldn't forget about functions just get over enamored with technology and right amount of behavioral skills that mix is what i think all academic institutions and higher education institutions are clamoring for i am associated with the nit university nit where we are actually practicing some of these and have had some great experiences but if this connected ecosystem is there then whether we are discussing the, the current workforce, uh, which is working in organizations or the aspiring workforce, which is standing outside and going through education, I think we can bring these together. What is important is, I think you brought some very specific experiences, uh, Vinita, from, uh, from the place that you are coming from, where... <clears throat> how organize, your organization is spending much more on training, uh, uh, making sure that you induct a fresh talent, which will also become catalyst in, in causing this massive change, which I think is a very important takeaway. Uh, 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 Vinnie, I think you talked about uh, how uh, the large scale cooperation, which is taking place between uh, between organizations and I think also the, the new generation industries and, and their employment needs uh, and how uh, organizations such as Microsoft are rising to the occasion through MS Learn uh, is causing this. The foundation of all this is uh, what I call the Nicholas Negroponte's uh, 80s book called Being Digital. I think for once, we as a society are now being digital. We wanted to be and we were asked to be, but we are being digital. And that being digital is manifesting itself in a number of changes which are required in the workplace, which are happening. 
number of changes taking place in academics which are beginning to happen and number of changes in the policy uh, ambience which uh, which need to happen but overall the changing employment landscape uh, is an exciting problem to have it's an exciting problem to have we should not do chinta about it we should do chintan about it like we just did vinita and uh, and uh, and and i'm sure with people and industry members who are uh, who are putting their heads to it and are demonstrating through live experience vinny referred to a number of them uh, i think uh, we we should be on a good stage the way we handled the pandemic itself i think is a great example i think india is a poster boy of uh, of how we handled the uh, pandemic and again being digital was the underlying foundation so i wish we had more time like we always say these are always the last words i wish we had more time to discuss i wish uh, we I, had all the time to answer all the questions i think that mc has written that we can take a few more minutes if you would like to very good then i want you to talk about your favorite subjects <laughs> no i mean well, talk I mean, about talk about no talk about metaverse talk about again it's in the same it's in the it's in the same uh, should i say genre of conversation what are the new things happening so what i notice is on one hand uh, we are talking metaverse on the other hand we are also talking of going back to spirituality so a lot of questions which we are seeking which have uh, in, impact of technology uh, the answers lie maybe in our past so let's talk a little bit about that and then we'll wrap up i wrapped up the rest of the part but definitely so mr tidari like you said going back to spirituality and metaverse actually these two it's not it's not linear we are talking about two different realms metaverse is happening in the physical world whereas spirituality is what is happening in our inner world and which is actually you know increasing the adaptability quotient in us and which is actually helping us to cope with the changes like metaverse instead so they complement each other it's not you know it's not a linear you know a journey it's not it's, it's not old and new which have to vary no, it's not but it's i not. think it's two it's different realms yeah which which yeah, complement each other wonderful so, yeah so uh, you know actually uh, like it has been seen that uh, you were just talking about human skills and uh, you know uh, work skills so actually these technical skills have half life whereas human skills have full life so human skills is what stays on and technical skills have typically a five year life span which if you are not open to reskilling and upskilling you have just lost the game so increasingly all organization even google etc i was just looking at their interview pattern they are all testing on human skills so spirituality actually why i, I found it interesting was that it's not actually uh, going back it's actually coming a full circle and technology is actually helping us you know become spiritual but using technology we can actually reach out to the entire world as opposed to the earlier guru shishya parampara where you know again you know one to one teaching was there so the same wonderful. thing can be amplified so wonderful. that's what like i spoke about in manufacturing from cottage industry to 3d it's the same you know it's not one size fits all it's customized product but at scale so same this is guru shishya parampara at scale that one guru can actually reach out to the whole world as Wonderful. opposed to one guru just teaching one you know pandava or uh, you know one king so it's wonderful wonderful so yeah. uh, vinny what are your closing comments on this i i think uh, why, why don't we talk about the social social emotional resilience uh, you referred to it but didn't talk uh, much so let's talk about it because these could be some very interesting takeaways that we have in yeah. addition to all that we discussed so social emotional resilience is about having a strong uh, emotional portion building emotional intelligence uh, where one uh, seeks you know uh, evolves uh, values of patience empathy compassion uh, for people have mindfulness 
uh, in terms of uh, self skills, to be in the learning mode, to be humble, uh, to be respectful, uh, to be tolerant. I think these are all fundamental values that uh, uh, bring in more peace uh, in our interactions at workplace as well as personal space. And today, both the spaces are converging. So it's not that one has a different entity in a workplace and a separate persona at home. So this has to be seamless. Yeah. Second in, is, in, in any case, your workplace shifted to home for two years. <laughs> and now it is struggling to find its way back into, the, <laughs> into what we call the workplace. And mm -hmm. I think workplace, uh, uh, you know, I get very impressed with the... Uh, uh, the Air Force recruitment ad, uh, which says, have a corner office at 50,000 feet. Uh, you know, the, when they are inducting fighter pilots, have your corner office at 50,000 feet. So in many ways, actually, when, when we look into ourselves and try to reconcile this with what is happening outside, as well as you know, visit those inner spaces, you are actually operating at that higher plat higher platitude, if I may use, and, uh, and then have your own corner office and a corner, uh, should I say, profession, uh, which is designed for, for your own self. So I, I would have liked to continue still more. And before uh, the MC gets back and say, now we have, don't have any more minutes, let's give them a couple of minutes to uh, uh, extra if need be. <clears throat> Just want to thank each one of you for, uh, for being here. Some very profound remarks and some very uh, important takeaways. Uh, thank you, Vinita. Uh, 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 we, we could have a separate session uh, on the, just this subject. And, uh, and Vinny, I, I think your uh, depth of understanding of of uh, what is happening in the workplace and the importance of uh, of this social uh, emotional resilience in the current setting, where I think there is total uh, uh, massive disruption that we are living in, and there is a big churn which is happening. Uh, I think both these are great takeaways which we could have. But uh, I will still end with the saying uh, with with all these thoughts. Uh, no need for chinta on the evolving uh, employment landscape. We continue to do chintan and I'm sure uh, the, the results will follow. So with that, thank you very much. I uh, enjoyed talking to you and I'm sure we'll get a chance to meet one of these days. Thank, thank you. you so much, Mr. Tadani. Uh, Tadani. It was an absolute pleasure.